no, I think the problem with uh, sort of all the grassland habitats is that you know you've actually really got to get into them before you can sort of. Uh, you know, get an indication because um, it's not likely to be anything that's sort of you know really big and showy. Um, it does depend a little bit on the time of the year when you might you know actually be going to the site, but uh, uh, really you've got to step into them, I think, to sort of get your first feel of what sort of you know particular type of, sort of grassland you might be in. I think it is um, because uh, neutral grasslands they sort of encompass a, a very broad spectrum of different sort of grassland types, and uh, you know so that sort of ranges from you know, some that are you know particularly species rich. So they may be the sort of places which you know are, you know would be within sort of a nature reserve or you know a site of special scientific interest, etc. But more frequently, sort of, you know, for the MPOS, you're likely to encounter something that we've got here today, and uh, which is not, uh, you know, at first glance, it doesn't appear to be species rich. You know, as we've walked into the field, you know, it doesn't look that exciting. But so on closer examination, you know, it gives us a good example, I think, of, you know, at the top end of this field, uh, there's sort of more sort of agriculturally improved grassland. Uh, and then the lower end of the field, you know, on closer examination actually gives us a few more clues about, you know, what we're actually in. And it's just slightly more species rich. And I think these sort of uh, grassland types as well, in terms of their in neutral grass and the species richness, uh, we know we've got that sort of wide variability, uh, but also the sort of uh, underlying geology, etc means that this sort of uh, grassland category sort of um, you know you, if there's a bit of base enrichment you know a bit of calcareous influence you know that's reflected within the species um, and also there can be a little bit of acidic influence uh, but they, they, those grassland types still sit within neutral grassland they are not clearly the sort of calcareous grasslands or the uh, triassic grasslands etc. Yeah, with neutral grassland, I think the first thing is is that it's actually the grasses, and they'll give a clear indication. And sort of, you know, traditionally, there's always been considered that you know there's a sort of suite of uh, grasses which, if they're in particular abundance, um, you know, will tell you that you're in neutral grassland. So you've got plants like meadow foxtail, full soak grass, um, coxfoot, with another example, um, crested dog's tail. And uh, the two fescues, tall fescue and uh, meadow fescue. Uh, and then, if conditions are a little bit damper, uh, then tufted hair grass would be another example. down from the top bit which is um, you know, relatively species poor and uh, but as we're sort of coming down the field one thing that does become very evident is that uh, it's obviously been grazed by sheep mm. and there's been preferential grazing in the lower part of uh, the field. Obviously if we were in a hay meadow once we get into the middle of June then uh, you know if there's been no grazing you know we'd see a lot of these species all, all in flower. Neutral grasslands encompass this wide range of different sort of grassland uh, types. Mm. You know, from some that are relatively species raw, uh, species poor, to some that uh, you know are extremely species rich and you know very much are valued and sort of precious uh, mm. uh, grasslands. Today when we've been looking at uh, 
neutral pastures and meadows. Predominantly we've looked at neutral pasture today, it's all been sheep grazed. And we've seen uh, some of that broad spectrum that you can expect to see, you know, within that sort of uh, overall category. So we've seen uh, quite species poor, neutral pasture, uh, one dominated uh, by Coxfoot. We've seen another example where it's quite a bit more improved, where there was an abundance of perennial ryegrass. And then we've seen other areas where it's actually quite species rich, where we've seen quite a lot of bird's foot trefoil. And also we've seen subtle sort of subtle changes you can see within that spectrum where there may be some plants giving some indication of base enrichment. So we've seen a lot of rough hawk bit on one of the parts of one of the fields. And also we've seen where there can be a little bit of acidic influence where we've seen some tormentil till and some devil's bit scabious to two examples. So that's hopefully sort of shown, you know, the broad range that the neutral pastures and meadows can actually encompass.